Welcome to Shannon's Club TV, where we look back on standout cars from Australian roads and racetracks. Join us as we examine the defining points of our feature car and take a drive with the proud owner in a well-preserved example. We'll also get some expert advice from the Shannon's auctions team. So let's get rolling with the Holdens that crushed Ford in the showroom and on the racetrack, the VT and VX Commodores. Buyers loved the VT from day one. So superior to the Falcon was it perceived to be that Ford Australia never again seriously challenged the Commodore's position as Australia's top selling car. When such challenges eventually arrived the following century, they came from cars like the Toyota Corolla Mazda 3 and Toyota Hilux, not the Falcon. Here for the first time with the VT, was a Holden that could bear comparison with a BMW on looks and road stance. There were no obvious compromises in design as evidenced by the fact that the sporty SS variant came with standard 17 inch alloy wheels. The VT executive was designed to appeal not only to fleet customers, but also to fussier private buyers. Ford Australia's marketing team chose the opposite approach to their lasting chagrin the AU Forte came to market significantly cheaper than a VT exec, but most of us couldn't cop the hose out, cheap feel to the cabin and aspects of the exterior design. Mark, how did the VT go as a basis for a V8 supercar? Oh, very successful. You know, when you look at the huge number of races won by the VT championships and races, and its VX successor, you'd have to say it was a very successful car indeed. However, the transition from road car to race car presented a bit of a weighty problem for Holden and its race teams, which I'll get to a bit later. The VT felt and was more solid and safer than previous Commodores. But despite the fact that this significantly heavier, safer Commodore used the same 147 kilowatt Ecotec engine as its predecessor, few owners complained about the slower acceleration. That's because they were too busy being in love with their cars. The major reason for the Commodore's weight gain was the much higher level of safety engineered into it. Less elegant were the wagons. The VU Ute though, especially the SS, was a new kind of Aussie sports car. June 1999 brought the Series 2. The major news was the replacement of the venerable and much loved Aussie 308 with a detuned Gen 3 Chevrolet 5.7 litre V8. The next year's VX got an improved drive shaft to reduce harshness and modest power increases for both the V6 and the V8 engines. A neat 5 kilowatts for each, taking the standard six pack from 147 to 152 kilowatts, and the Gen 3 from 220 to 225. The deletion of the leaky red plastic applique between the taillights saved a few bucks per car, but did make the rear end look plainer. Mark, did the VT's supremacy over the AU Falcon extend all the way to Mount Panorama? Oh, it sure did, and a lot more besides. I mean, for five seasons there, you could have called those two cars the untouchables. While Australian motorists immediately warmed to the more generous proportions and improved crash safety of the VT Commodore, those same attributes presented literally a weighty problem for race teams. The VT was larger than its VS predecessor in almost every dimension, with a curb weight almost 200 kilograms heavier. However, with the removal of numerous internal steel panels and other hardware not required for racing, the VT did manage to slim down to meet its minimum weight target. The VT won a total of 63 races and played a decisive role in the Holden Racing Team claiming a hat-trick of V8 Supercar Championships between 1998 and 2000, shared by Top Gun's Craig Lowndes and Mark Scaife. The VT also won two Bathurst 1000s during this era in becoming one of Holden's most successful race cars. John, looking back on the VT, you know, that car just seemed to be blessed from the start. It just seemed to tick all the boxes, didn't it? 
Yes, and uh, chief of all of those perhaps was styling. Mike mm. Simcoe deserves the credit for a, a brilliant piece of design. They started out with the Opal Omega mm. and they finished up with I think, like one tiny little <laughs> component shared. The whole yeah. car was redesigned. It's a really lovely taut, mm. almost with a kind of a little bit of a Jaguar kind of a, a, a feeling about it. And uh, a natural, very elegant, natural, natural rake. Low, low, yeah. uh, natural rake, yeah. nose forward, nose down sort of look. Yeah, it had that more sort of tough Australian car, broad shoulders a yeah. lot, didn't it? And mm. the executive it didn't feel like you were short-changed. Yeah. It had really nice upholstery yeah. and, the, and the fit and finish of the, uh, of the componentry was good, so far superior to the AU Falcon Forte. Mm. Well, I can remember that at the time because they, they were still doing big business with fleets. They were. And if you had to put a guy into a Commodore Executive or an AU Forte, you know which one he'd be squealing about. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 They really kicked the goal there. They did. The early 2000s continued a golden era for SCAFE and the factory Holden team as they moved to the mildly facelifted but mechanically identical VX. HRT won the 2001 and 2002 V8 Supercar Championships during an unprecedented period of dominance over arch rival Ford and its unloved AU Falcon. During this time, the VX won a total of 45 races, including two memorable victories for the Holden Racing Team in the Bathurst 1000, with different co-drivers. In 2001, Scaife and 1988 Bathurst winner Tony Longhurst won a drama-filled race affected by wild weather. The following year, he was reunited with former Nissan teammate Jim Richards in scoring another nail-biting win a decade after their last. This time with Scaife's engine temperature off the clock due to some plastic bags from the spectator areas being sucked into the radiator's air intake. Combined, the VT and VX won a staggering 108 races between 1998 and 2002, including five consecutive V8 supercar championships and four straight Bathurst 1000 wins. The VT may have started out as a heavyweight, but after five seasons of dominance, the VT and VX will always be remembered as the General's heavy hitters, which delivered a knockout punch to Ford. Other great episodes of Shannon's Club TV are available to view anytime on the club website. Hi, I'm Mitchell Drysdale, here today at the Trafalgar Holden Museum with my 1999 Holden VT Series 2 Commodore SS. I found the car at a local car yard in 2015. Mechanically, it was a bit sad. The body was in quite good condition. I could see its potential. I had to fix a lot of engine oil leaks, some front end bushes, brakes. Other than that, just general servicing and give it a good clean up. It's in 100% original condition now. My favourite feature of this car is the Generation 3 LS1 engine. It's a huge improvement in power and performance and it really transformed the car from the older engine. We're fitted with FE2 sport suspension from factory. These cars handle magnificently well. We've got 17 inch wheels with big tyres, so hang onto the road really well. The performance is brilliant from the, from the 5.7 litre V8. Drive nicely, handle well. I've always been a Holden fan, goes back through my family, it's in my DNA. Can't remember a time of not owning a Holden. I insure my cars with Shannon's, I have for the last five years. I've had wonderful experience with them, been really good to deal with. Seeing these cars on the track with Craig Lowndes and Mark Scaife winning championships was part of putting those cars on the wall as a kid. Our uh, plan is to keep the car as original as possible and just to maintain its current condition. Well, Shannon's National Auctions Manager Chris Borabon is here to bring us right up to speed on the VT and VX Commodores. Welcome, Hello, mate. Hi. Welcome, Chris. The VT Commodore was the Commodore that really finally put put Holden ahead of Ford Australia, really, like forever. Forever, yeah, yeah absolutely. I, you know, 
new shape, uh, yeah. you know, the, the interior space, uh, obviously larger than what we've previously seen. Yeah. Um, it, it, was, it was a good package and, uh, you know, I think the Series 1 was an interesting car. It was probably the last of the 5 litre V8s before we went on to the Chevs as well. Yes. Mm. Yeah. And a big increase in safety too, which I know a lot of people appreciated. Mm. But you know, a lot of cars, when you look between VX and VT production, that's more than half a million. So they yeah, were enormously absolutely. popular, weren't they? Yeah, and there were so many models in that range that we, you know, it's where do you start, where do you finish with I was going to say, yeah, I mean, there's yeah. so many in that group. Let's yeah. just sort of concentrate on the hero model. So mm. let's just say VT Series 1. What, what, would, what should a collector be looking for? Look again, anything with the V8, like uh, V8. The, the SS, obviously was uh, was mm. the one to have, um, and, and then you'd go to the HSV range, obviously, and that's uh, you know that was quite popular. And then sometime after the launch of the VT, we got the VU Ute, yep. which mm. really was a new kind of Australian sports car. Fantastic in, in SS look. guys, yes. wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. You know, in, in Tiger Metallic, with, yeah. you know, with SS manual, mm. what a, what a, what, a, what a fantastic new kind of sports car. And mm. that uh, really was the hero of the, of the Ute range. Oh, I mean, we've always had a massive affiliation with Utes here in Australia. Absolutely. And I, and I think, you know, something like that, you know, the 5 litre V8 with the manual box behind it. I yeah. Mean, uh, you know, who'd mm. paradise, really? That's yeah. right. <laughs> who'd paradise? <laughs> yeah. and, and, and there were some six-cylinders in the range, the Ecotec V6, the 3.8 litre, uh, and also the supercharged version. Yep. And, of course, we had like an XU6 model in the HSV range. Yep. Six cylinders in terms of collectability, do they... <laughs> I would think that they always play second fiddle to V8s, don't they? They do. They tend to play second fiddle to the V8s. And, and mm. I think, you know, we were very fortunate. We, I guess we had so many models that were upgraded by HSV and, you know, mm. the Club Sport, the GDSs, limited edition of the um, 300Is that yeah. came out. And it's, mm. uh, it was quite, yeah, quite special. And, and, and I think people had a real choice of what to look at. And the long wheelbase cars, of mm. course. Were, yeah, were, WH. Were, were pretty WH, good, yeah. weren't they? Yeah, yeah the Grangers yeah. and the Caprices. Yes. Yes. Statesman yeah. Caprice, yeah. yeah. That's interesting what you say about the engines, though, the V8s, because even though we have an affection, I'm sure collectors do, uh, the Series 1 VT having the last of the Holden-made Holden V8s yes, with a fantastic right. heritage, this market's all about grunt, isn't it? Power. Yeah. Isn't it? yeah. So that's why the Gen 3 was just... That, that beautiful aluminium V8 from America, everyone just em embraced it because it was just so powerful, wasn't it? It, it was, and I think, you mm. know, I think we've always had that tight connection with, with the US and, uh, you know, mm. and I think we've always wanted what, you know, a bit of what the Corvette had in it mm. and to be able to get the, uh, you know, the Gen 3 motor out here and put that in the Commodores, I think that was a great thing. And mm. the Commodore SS got a six-speed gearbox, and I remember it was very, very tall six gear. It mm. actually would not pull <laughs> six, it would not pull despite the 5.7-litre yeah. V8 up some hills in six, <laughs> mm. very tall gear. But six-speed gearbox in an Australian car, that was mm. a bit of a breakthrough. That was a breakthrough as well, absolutely, yeah. 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 Okay, so uh, we talk about pecking orders in terms of collectability. Uh, Holdens, we're looking at S SS, and that's that's right, that includes the Ute, of includes course. Includes the Ute, yeah. yeah. And HSV models, the Classics, Club Sport, GTS. Exactly right. Yeah? Yeah, and I think, okay. you know, finding all the low production stuff, you know, the things that were built in the lowest numbers, obviously, are the ones that are obviously going to draw the and, most. And originality, is that important Correct. in absolutely. these cars? Look, originality, uh, low Ks, maintenance, uh, condition overall is what you'd be looking okay. for. Good stuff. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, guys. Remember, you can keep up to date with all the latest Shannon's Auctions news on the Shannon's Club website. If you want a lasting memory of the VT and VX Commodores in competition, check out the huge archive at autopix.com.au. John, in wrapping up, I don't think we've covered the massive left-hand drive export program that these cars achieved. Well, it was a huge mistake Holden made with the HQ by not building it, not designing it to be built in left-hand yeah. drive, so they missed enormous yeah. export opportunities. Yeah. Holden did not make that mistake with the VT, which yeah. really was really was kind of a world car. It yeah. went to lots of... Uh, yeah. overseas markets. Yeah, the Middle East, um, South America, some other, other export markets. It's also worth noting that it was really Mike Simcoe's signature design. It really He was. then went, went yeah. behind the scenes and did the VT Monaro. And probably his work on those two really quite beautiful cars mm. probably paved the way for his becoming the head of the GM design world, mm. which is a pretty big achievement for an Aussie. Mm. He really had an eye for design. Absolutely. He? Yeah. Has, still has. Yeah, and yeah. then those cars, you know, even today, still look still look good, the VTVX. They do. Mm. They absolutely do. Timeless. Yeah. Timeless, yes. <laughs> Indeed. We hope you've enjoyed reflecting on the elegant VT and VX Commodores. We hope you can join us next time for Shannon's Club TV. Bye for now.